see Sean's in here. All right, Sean you, Sean, you in? Yep, you came out right? Yep. Yeah, cool. All right, welcome to Valence Developer Diaries number three. Um, first, let's start with, I guess, Sean, what, what we're going to go over in this start of this session is creating yeah. an application that actually uh, uploads and um, downloads documents off your IFS through App Builder. Um, I guess I'd like to point out real quick is that some of my housekeeping stuff. Um, we've added a calendar to our uh, main page so that if you want to see upcoming sessions, we will be putting those sessions out there with a brief description of what we're going to be covering. So that's on our CNX website. So Sean, I guess really I should just share it to you because I think you have a wireframe that we're going to kind of go off of, right? Yeah, let's yeah, let's do that first. All right. Okay. All right. You can see that, I assume. Yes, I can see it. Okay, so we're gonna have a landing page uh, with a, a grid, a KPI widget, and a uh, pie chart. Um, clicking the plus here, so this represents the number of documents that you know, the customers have. So we're just gonna build off of that demo CMAS file is, again. Uh, so if I click add document, we're gonna prompt for an image to upload, or a document, I should say. Um, Description, tags, so we'll see what all that means. So once I click upload, then this should become available because remember this was initially disabled because I didn't have any documents. Right. And when I click here to view the images or the, the documents, I'll get a list of all the documents for that customer. Um, as I click it, depending on the file type, it will determine if it can show it. So if it's a, you know, a web supported format like PDF or images, we'll show it in here. Otherwise, if it's not supported and I click, it should know to download. Sweet. Okay. So that's it. I'm going to stop my sharing and go back to you. All right. Okay. You can see my screen. Yep. Okay. So here I'm already logged into the portal. Um, if you were in for the last sessions, you remember that we created app usage. So now we're just going to do the customer documents with App Builder. So we're first going to launch App Builder. And I guess <clears throat> first thing is that, like Sean said, we're going to be building off the file that is included in the valence uh, demo CMAS. We did have to create a new file for holding the document information, right, Sean? Um, yeah, yeah, we did. Let me go to file editor just so we can see that. Cus docs. You know, Cus docs. Cus C -O -C -U -S docs. C-U-S docs. Okay, let's just take a look at what we have. So we have the ID, the customer number, the path, the name, file type, description, those tags that you saw, and then the date created by and creation date. So, okay. So first thing we're gonna need is a data source for this, right? For that initial main list that was the customers and number of docs that customer has. So we'll go into SQL data source and I already have the statement so I have to type it out. So I'm gonna copy that. And this, we're just pulling the customer information from demo CMAST, and then we have one calculated column that's going after that new file, getting the number of uh, rows for that customer. So initially, we should see zero. Yeah, 
dot count zero dot count zero. Okay. So let's save that, tag it. Okay. So I guess first I'm just gonna limit my view. Like create the grid for this first list. I'm going to create widget, select the grid, and based on your wireframe, we had the can tell, yeah. um, customer name. Customer, right? Yep. And then we have a... Uh, That's a right, location. the address. Yeah, and we called it location, and then we're kind of, we're going to use a formatter here so we right. can put all the fields in one cell. And I actually have that my text so we don't have to type it out but we can go over what it's doing so here we're in a format and this was because we wanted to take we have one field that's address line one and then possibly two and then we have city state zip country we have those all in separate columns and we want to have one column in the grid showing all that information so here we're getting the value initially of address one and then we're pulling in the values for address two, state, city, zip, and country. And here we're checking if we do have a value in address two, we want to include it. And then also the same thing, if we have a value for state, we want to include it. Otherwise, just city and zip. And then we add country at the end and return it back out. Um, and then we, that was it, right? Because then we had the action columns. Well, and then you also have number of documents. That's, you want that's to put right. In there too. And then maybe just to uh, just to show, you know, you could do number of, and then you can break it if you want to go to another line, just so people know that's possible. So you can you can put HTML markup within any of these labels, and then you can see it did break. So. I'm going to say name and location can be the same. Docs should be, I don't know, 50. How's that look? Sure. Maybe we center align that. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then some of the things we probably want to do is. We know we don't need paging on this one, right? I mean, there's no. Yeah, I'd remove it. And then uh, let's add search. Okay. That was it, right? Based on that first list that we had? Yep, that's it. That looks like the, okay. the list we want. All right, now that we have that list, do you want to just, let's just get the app created, start it up. Sure. So we're going to create the new app in the app section. And right away, we know we want to just use our first widget, which was the customer list. And give it a title of the app and That should be it for now. Customer documents, and then this is just all portal information, which if you were in the other sessions, you, you know about already. I'm just gonna save it so we have this document, this app. Okay, so I should be able to see it. Here it is. Not much to it now, but it's a start, okay. What is next? Oh, well, I wonder, do we, do we wire in the, the upload now or should we um, get those other widgets out there? I wonder if we just, it, um, you know, you wanna just do the upload first and then we'll see that. Yeah. Or should maybe, we, in, what? Maybe start it out in behaviors. Yeah. That way we can at least agree on a program name and everything. 
Okay, so what we're saying is based on those wireframes, we need to give them a way to add, upload, add, add a document, add, right? Add a document and then view documents. And then the view documents, we don't want them to be able to click it if they don't have any documents. Right. So we're gonna show you how to do that here. I guess I can't do the view documents just yet because I don't have, a, I don't have anything to go to, right? We don't have that. Yeah, let's just do the ad, I guess. Right. Okay. So, and that will use the icon column, which yep. will give us an icon directly in each each row of the grid. Um, uh, let's see. Plus, is that what we're looking for? Perfect. Yep. Tool tip. Add document. This is always valid. We don't need a condition on this one. But now when they click it, what are we going to do? So the first thing is we're, we're going to want to call an RPG program, right? Right. So this gets into, you know, any, any, any time you're specifying to call an RPG program, we'll always have a template you can copy from. If you, Johnny's clicking that question mark there, and this is going to bring up the template that we should be copying from, in this case, EX NAB BTN. If you go across the top, you'll see there's various samples. So sample one, what is this one doing? Processing multiple, multiple rows. rows. Sample two, I think sample three might be relevant for us. Uploading right. a file through NAT. Um, we're gonna do something similar to this. Ours is gonna be a bit more complicated because we're also gonna be writing out to a, a database file and um, we might be creating uh, folders and that sort of thing too, so. All right, so I guess first we need the name. What are, we, what are you gonna call this? Uh, let's call it DD underscore cuss docs. Okay. Yeah. And for adding, do we want an action? No, no action here. Um, Nothing's being returned document wise. We do need more information before calling though, right? Yeah. So this is that, that screen where we're asking for, you know, what, what file do you want to upload? Give it a description and then optionally specify some right. tags. Right. Okay, well first I'm gonna uh, do the file. And if I just switch the type to upload, handle that for me, it is required. Here we can say specific extensions that are only valid. So we could do like PDF, and, you know, so on and so forth. Here, we're, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna allow everything to come through for the time being. Yeah. Okay, next we need uh, description. And what do you wanna call that parameter for description? Uh, I'll how about DESC, all lowercase? So whatever we type in the parameter name is, is the name I'm going to go after to pull in the value. And that's where we'll you know, be using some of the valence uh, RPG toolkit procedures to pull in those values. And I also need a link. Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, just make it 128, I think. 128. Okay. That's our description. And the last would be tags, if you wanted to add tags. Tags. And I guess we want that comma separated. Yeah. So maybe comma separate each tag. Sure. Tags. And that is going to be text also. Length, we do require. Maybe, not, maybe that's optional, we could say. Okay. Yeah, that. that's good. That's good idea, actually. Uh, what do you want to set the link to on this one? Uh, I think the I think it I think the database is two fifty six. Okay. Okay. Now we have the document or file that the the user can then upload the description and those tags. That was it on that our wireframe, right? That was it. Okay. Uh, All right. I'm just gonna really. I just. I need to save it and then we need to start working on that RPG yep. program. So I'm yep. gonna save it and then I'm gonna hand this off to you. Maybe let's just show what it does now. Oh, we have a, an object out there? Uh, I mean, just without processing it, but at least show the oh, prompt. Okay, yeah. The prompt's working. 
can reload that frame. So now we should have that icon column on the right. Click. Okay. Document. Description. Text. Okay, cool. All right, so now we need to work on the RPG program to, um, to process that. So let's see here. I'm gonna go into green screen here. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go to our valence instance, and I'm going to copy that exnab button. And I'm going to, I'm going to, we have a library called dev diary, and we said the name would be dd underscore cus docs. Dev diary. Okay. Right, I'm just going to go in and first, I'm just I'm just getting rid of a bunch of this clutter, I just okay. so it's easier to look. And just at. so everybody knows, we already added this library to the valence environment that we're logged in with the dev diary. Okay, so nav button programs, our code we're supposed to go and process. So we leave everything else intact. So. This program, this DD Custocs, we're gonna use this program to process everything. Not only the upload, but when they wanna view a file. So I know that this program is gonna take on multiple modes. Um, so there's a variable that's populated called is upload, if it's processing an upload. So I'm gonna check for that. So if is upload, I'm gonna create a procedure called process upload. Else, you know, eventually more stuff, you know, will be right. here. So let me create a procedure called process upload. Um, it's kind of a lot of, it's probably going to be kind of a lot of code to type out here, but let me, um, think what we want to do here. Okay, so let me let me create some variables first. Um, I know when they when they're processing an upload, I want to pull the customer number. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to need the customer number because basically we're going to create a folder structure here. And actually, Johnny, let me Yeah, I need to me, add that. Yeah, let me show let me you go back to showing your screen. If you can just show that structure, like in source editor, where yep. we're going to save to. Yes. That might be helpful. So I even had that up. Okay. And I guess so, I'll bring up a point about the Apache server too. So we, IFS, we, well, we created a folder called customer documents. We're going to store all the customer documents in, in there. We're going to create folders on the fly of the customer number. So at least each customer has their own document or has their own folder. Right. And then in, in our Apache instance, which is VBZoom 5.2, um, we added a directive for, um, for that. So it could have access to, I'm gonna attempt to get to the perfect. Here's Zoom. I'm just going to display the configuration and I'm going to point out where we made the change. And I think I did it at the, there we go. So we just have an alias of customer documents that maps to customer documents on the IFS. That way when we're having to pull those, we can, the Apache instance will, will serve those up for us. All right. Do you want me to pass it back to you then, or at this point, Sean? Uh, you know what? Before you, you do, want to add maybe that yeah. Let's let's go in there and um, let's work with the app variables. Well, I know that we'll need customer, right? Yes. And then we will also need. 
I think that's it initially. You know what, for now, because I, I'm just thinking ahead. So yeah, customer, yeah. that's it. So when they, so, so when the user clicks that plus button, um, let's set, we're going to yeah. set the customer ID to that app variable. That way my RPG program can pull in that app variable and I have, uh, you know, what I need to build out my folder path. There we go. I'm just going to move it above because I know that's what it is. Okay. Okay. So now it's going to set the app variable when they click it, which is the customer number, which you'll, which the RPG program will need to create that directory when we're adding a document, if that directory doesn't already exist. And okay, I'm going to send it back to you. Okay. All right, so let me just create a couple variables. I'm going to create Cosmo. Um, I'm going to create a variable called base path. And really, we've agreed that the base path is going to be customer documents. I'm going to create folder path. Uh, I'll make this 128, let's say. And then what else do I want here? I want a full path I'm going to create that'll hold the, the base path, the folder path, path, plus the file name. Right. Uh, just make that 256 to be safe. I'm going to extract the file type. So as, as the file comes in, I want to just stamp and say if it's a, you know, a PDF or, you know, whatever type of file it is. Um, tags. I want to pull the tags. And then you're also passing me description. Yeah, DESC. Okay. Uh, I think we made that 128. Okay, let's just start for now. So you're gonna have to bear with me. This is a this is gonna be a bit a lot of code to type out here. So first, I'm gonna build the folder path. So Cusno, I'll explain why I do it like this. Customer. So I'm using the get at var and pulling in customer. So remember Johnny set that on his app variable on the click. So I'll be able to get the number. Get at var really returns a graphic field. If I were to go directly into a character, it would do the conversion for me. But because I want to int it, I can't int the graphic field. I need to chart first. So basically all I'm doing is I'm turning this Custom into a numeric. Uh, L and, and the reason for those to be graphic is so we can support multilingual, right? Double white characters. Exactly, like Japanese characters. Right. So I'm going to trim this path plus. Let me do this. Let me put. Let me put a forward slash here. Plus percent char. I'll cuss no. Okay, so now I have my folder. So now I want to check if that folder exists. Check if folder, because if it doesn't, I need to create it. So I'm going to use a uh, VVIFS method, path exists. So if it doesn't exist, I create a variable command. I'm going to do a make directory. SQ is short for single quote. You know, that's in our copy source. Plus trim of L folder path. Um, now I want to execute this command. I'm going to create a 
function to do that or procedure. Execute command L command. Okay. Um, let me pull that in. I created something called copy stuff in CNX Live. All right, so there we are. Let me just take care of something here. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to start to prepare the, uh, I, now I want to actually call the, the valence procedure called vvn underscore file to save that file. So I need to populate the VV, vvn structure and I just need to tell it where I want it to um, save it and I want it to save it there. So I'm just going to call vvn file. I'm going to pass that vvn object and then I'm passing this second parameter. The second parameter star, this all uppercase star null just means VVN file wants to send a response for you. I'm basically just telling it, don't send a response. I'm going to handle sending a response. So anytime you're working with uploads in NAB, always do it like this. So now, Check if it was successful. So vvn.ear will be populated. If it's blanks, that means it was good. So in this case, I'm going to write out to that, that database file, that, that cus docs. So I need to set up some things, a folder, path. I'm setting up the full path. So VVN also populated the name of the file for me. Okay, so now this is just the full path to the file. Description. Now normally, I would be able to do VVN char description, but because I'm in an upload, I need to handle this differently. Uploads are the one exception. I do VV utility get sets var name, and then I'm passing in the SID of the session variable that I want to get. Behind the scenes, this is passed to this program. So that's, that's the unique SID. So this is how you pull in variables when processing an upload. And then we can note, we can state that these utility functions like VV utility, the VVN, that's all documented in our API documents that you can find on the base launch pad. It's an app record, right? So they that's can right. see that. All right, so now I'm gonna just get file type. I, I copied this somewhere, so let me just, just because I didn't want to have to type all that out. So this is just a uh, procedure that's just extracting the file type. Okay. Um, last thing I want to do is I want to get the whole session data record because I want to get the username here. Now, normally I'd be able to do get the VB utility, get current user, but in this case, because it's an upload, everything's a bit different. So I better, uh, I better create a couple of variables here before I continue on. I did this L command. Let me just create a L command. 
L command, and then L, um, what did I call it? Sess data, which is an external data structure. External name is VV Sess data. So this will give me the whole session record. Okay. All right. And so you want now, that session record because of you want to find out who it is? Yes, because ultimately we're going to stamp the file with the user who created this. Right. Okay. So I'm going to insert into cus docs value values. Oops. Default, I'm just saying, because it's an auto-generated ID. Cus knows the second field. Path. And the name of the file. File type. Description. Tags. Take the default date and lsysdata.vv login ID. This is the user ID. Okay, <laughs> I know it's a lot here. So now I'm gonna set the response. The response, success, true, set response, uh, will pop up something. We're giving it some info. Info, this, anytime you pass info, that'll pop up that little snack bar. We'll say file. vvn.file name uploaded. Okay, else there was an error. So now I want to send back false. And then I'll send back a message of whatever the error was. MSG as opposed to info will pop up a window. And I'm just going to put the uh, trim of VB in dot air. All right, let me just set off commitment control. Um, Try and compile this uh, make sure my library is good. So remember compiling, I always need to do level two. Please compile. Uh, oh, VVLOG login ID had a typo there. Must have another typo somewhere. Execute. Execute command. Oh, okay. Oh. CMD. Okay. All right, I guess I will uh, go back to you if you want to try it now. Uh, trying to find my screen. Oh, uh, so many. Uh, okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. The one thing I just thought of is that, um, so we can see this right away, we want to probably tell the um, the app on success to reload the list, right? Oh, good point. Because then we're just not going to really know. So. so remember the RPG program, we were sending that success true or success false. So we can do further actions based on that. So if success is true, we want to we wanna reload the data on that customer list. 
So we just made sure, okay, yeah, show it. It's already shown, but we flip because by default it's keep data and we want to say load data because we know that an action has happened to cause that doc number to go up. Okay. Just keep our fingers crossed here. And toes. All right. Didn't even think about documents if I had some sitting around. Okay. Doc. I don't know. Um, notes and test. Oh, okay. all right. So yeah, we number is up to one. Excellent. Sweet. Maybe let's go into uh, yeah. source editor and just look at it. Okay, I'm going to refresh this. Sweet. So there's my customer number. And then there's our document. Excellent. All right. Okay, I guess this would be a good point, uh, step to like say, let's get to that net. Let's at least get to the next screen and see the, the list of the doc or documents that are attached to that customer. Yeah. Okay. We're going to need a new data source going directly at that new file. And I have the statement, so I'm going to have to sit around. So just everything from the new file of cust docs. Okay, and we can see that one record that you just added. Or I did. Okay, this will be a grid also, listing of the documents for that customer. And now I have to remember, what, what do we have yeah. for that? So, so, so this one, the first field was mm -hmm. the, uh, the file type, but I think we, 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 we apply some sort of format yeah, I, to that to right. show a, an icon. Right, I marked that up a bit. Type and let me get that markup because I we created that before and so we're gonna type it all up. So let's go through what this is doing. So on file type column, we have an icon, default the color. We have some markup that we've started here. And then we're checking that type. If it's a PDF, we're gonna set it to be one of the images, the VD icon file PDF. These all can be found, Sean, right too, is if I go easily, I could go into our um, administration application and go to apps, drill into it, and then if I hover, it gives me the icon, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's how you could find those. And so we're doing the same thing. If it's Excel, PNG, an image of some sort, or a doc, and then we're just returning up, returning that markup. Hey, just really quick. Um, yes. <clears throat> Terry just asked if there's a way to capture the size of the upload, and I'm, we'll, I'll look at that, but I'm pretty sure in that VB and data structure, it, it, it um, has the number of bytes. Oh, the size of what they're uploading? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to move this up. That was the first... And then I think the next thing was the type. So we should show that icon. Let's just see, do we have, perfect. And we want to change this to be um, I don't know, 120. Really, probably not have a column heading. Okay, that's still too big, 90 center line. All right, we'll start with that. The next based off memory is the, the name of the file itself, right? Right. We're gonna, and I do have markup that we did for that. And that yeah. was so we could incorporate the description, the tags all into one. Yep. 
And let's go right to custom formatting. Like I said, we already had this marked up a bit. Um, so here we have a, the, the value V would be the, the actual file name. Um, we always have record. So we're going and getting the file tags. Um, we're splitting those tags up because if you remember, we're storing them in a comma separated format. Normally, I mean, this is just for demo purposes, right? To walk through this example, but we probably would have created another table, right? Uh, on the IBMI that would be here are all my tags for this document for this customer. But this is what we do for this description. And then we have this tag item and then we just have some base markup. So we want to say file name, so the name of the file, the description. And then if they did do tags, we want to set those tags in there too, right? So here we're doing all the replacement and returning it back. So at the end of the day, this is re still returning back a string, but the string is HTML. And then that markup will be rendered from the browser. Move that up and there you go. You can see that, Oop. you can see our markup right there. So file name, the description that I put in, and then those two tags. All right. And we just had a uploaded date and uploaded by, you know. Date. Date, I'm gonna format it. Um, we'll just make it a little friendlier. And then by user, that's fine. We don't want it that big. It's going to be an ID, so 120. And probably throw a date here, so 150. Okay. Was there anything else based off that wireframe that we had? I'm just going off memory. Just those four columns. Ultimately, we had a way to delete it, but nothing needed now. Okay. All right. This for sure, we do not want paging. You could, of course, but we just, for this example, we don't paging. And I, it should be good for now, right? I think that's good enough. All right, let's incorporate that new widget, which is gonna be the listing of documents for that customer. So here we're gonna do a new section. Um, so we have the main section, which we every app has. We're gonna add a new section. I'm just gonna call it docs. And now in this new section, we wanna add that new widget. So I'm gonna just filter down, we see our one widget. Okay. Then now we want to be able to add that documents icon, which is an action just like the upload, but that's going to cause the app to move to the, the new section called docs to view the, or see the list of documents for that customer if they have documents. So I'm going to go to behaviors. And I'm going to go into customer list, back to that icon column, and we're going to add another one. And uh, um, sure. Here we want to do um, a condition because we wanted it. We don't want them to be able to click this if there's no documents because it doesn't make sense. So here we know we have this dot count on our main list, which we're already showing on the, on the grid itself. So we want to just want to say that this is greater than zero. So if this is whatever you put here, this expression, when it's tested, if it's, you know, if it's true, then that button will be enabled. If it comes back false, it's, it's going to be disabled. Looking at it, I guess our, our, our text there isn't really it, helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. The text, I think we need to change. Yeah. 
Okay, so now what do we want to do when they click that? So, um, go ahead. Yeah, when they, when they click that, um, let's set, yeah, exactly, set that variable. Let's get that customer number. It's just nice to have it in case we need it. Right. Right. And then we want to filter widget, the only widget we have right now. And here is where we want to say customer number, and we can just go to app bars since we just previously set it to customer. And the next thing we're going to want to do is since we're swapping sections, we want to, we want to do that show and hide. So our hide show. We want to hide main, We're leave. we want to leave main, we want to go to the new doc section. Um, and we definitely want to load the data. Yeah, which I think in reality though, talking it through, like since we're already doing a filter, that would have caused it to happen, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and at our title too, let's right. change that title and we switch over. Name. All right. We'll need a way to get back. Should we just add that? Might as well. So now that we've moved via behaviors, we're initially actually we're actually moving to the new doc section. We need to be able to give the user a way to get back to main. So we would do that by just adding a button to the section itself. want that left aligned no button text either oh yes thank you and uh, you know there's no right or wrong with that but that's just what we you know if you, we're consistent now we do it right and this is going to be an easy one it's just to hide show and we're hiding docs because that's where we're at we want to go back to main Uh, you know what, we might, we might want to refresh that because ultimately we're going to allow them to add or remove right. documents from there as well. Right, so we'll need to do a load because we don't know what they've done. Okay. All right, I think that's good for now. Reload the app. Okay, I'm gonna go right to this one to see if we swap. Perfect. Excellent, can we go back? Okay, right away I see that we went back and we didn't, on back, I didn't uh, reset the app bar title. So that's, that's an issue we have to handle, but at least now we are seeing the list for that customer that was clicked. And we're also seeing that we can't click these other ones because there isn't any documents for that customer. So I'm gonna go back and handle the app bar title right away I'm back so we don't have anything sitting out there that's wrong. So here's my back button, unclick, set up, not app bar, app bars, app bar. And we can easily just say set to previous title, whatever it was, save. Okay. Um, well, I guess, do we want it? get the viewing of this document going. All right, well, there's many routes we could go. I guess we could we could work on the deletion of the document know. or if we I'm could- I'm wondering if we're gonna have time. We got 10 minutes. Oh, I didn't even notice it was 10.49. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, maybe just maybe get that uh, URL right? viewer in there. Yeah. And we'll just... Okay, so based on that wireframe, we're gonna so do to it. the right of that was a utility widget, which was a URL widget, right? Doc. I'm gonna move it up. I fix the margin so it's all equal. And 
then we can uh, oh we can set up that that template we have too. So right. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess we'll, we'll want a for this we're going to want uh, to use an app variable for the the document path, right? So I'm just going to create a variable called doc path for now. And then with that, because there's times that we're clicking on that list, we'll have the path we want to set, we want to have that set. And then other times we want to default it. And we, in that wireframe, we had a, uh, if a document's not selected, we don't just see this white space of nothing because that would look kind of, it just wouldn't look appealing. And, and we have something already on the IFS, right, Sean, that we put yep. together. No document.html. No document.html. So this is just a, a HTML document that's sitting out there that it's meant for like a placeholder before until they click to, to view a document. So that's that space on the right isn't just all white. So not no document.html. So I think first is I want to link. This is something that's new with with app variables, but you can link certain widgets to your to app variables if needed and it's every widget might have different things they can do for linking so if you were to click that link to app variables button on a grid it would look different than the app very the the link variables you have available here in this case if we link up that url to one of our app variables any time this app variable changes, it's going to automatically reload that screen. It's going to reload that widget, and the the app variable can change from the front end from a behavior, or the or it can change from an RPG call doing set app var, and it'll automatically change what's loaded in this widget. Okay. So now that we've linked that, if we can at least get it, because I know we're we're already at ten fifty two. Um, at least link it to where when we are moving from this section and viewing of the docs, we set that default path. So they have that placeholder until they click the doc, a document to view, right? Yeah. So let me go here. Docs on click, set up vars, and here's our doc path. And that was what am I going to do here? Forward slash customer documents. Customer documents. No document dot HTML. No document dot HTML. All right. That should be it. I'm going to go and view. Sweet. Excellent. So this just makes it so that it's not just all white space because it we don't have a document to show yet. So this is kind of just informing the user they can click on any document. And then this is when we would get into, okay, they click this document. Do we want to view it here or do they have to download it? Because it might be something that's not supported by the browser like an Excel spreadsheet. Hey, Johnny, really fast. I think we're missing the CSS or the icons for that document. It's probably looking in resources. Can you just go to oh, that yeah. HTML? Yep. Maybe just move it into our folder here. Like, I think there it is. It's looking for those icon fonts. Let me just, let me just grab those. Those icon fonts that we have are in resources. I know that. Copy. Shouldn't have to do that. Now that screen should look a little different. Now it still needs to pull it. Shocked it didn't show actually. There we go. All right. So I guess you know next next week when we have that list of uh, of documents when we click on that. Because this particular document in this case is a PDF and, and, and it's, we can show a PDF in the browser, that's, that widget on the right will be replaced with that PDF. 
Um, if they click something else, like an Excel file or something, then we're going to initiate a download. Right. And then also add the ability to remove a document from here and then also add a document from here too. All right. I think that, yeah, at, based on the time, it's 1055. I don't think we can jump into another item because we'll be over our hour. Um, all right. Is there any questions or anything? I haven't been able to really watch the chat. Um, uh, Greg asked, how do you create the table used here? Um, we just, yeah, we, we just, it was just a DDL. Just a simple, I, I, I think that's your question. And if someone needs to unmute Okay, them. yeah, yep, that was good. Yeah, so yeah, nothing special about the, the cuss docs table. All right. Okay, great. All right, well, thanks everybody for joining us. And then like Sean said, we will uh, continue um, next Friday finishing this app. Hey, Ryan, it's Balsamic. Ryan just asked what software are we using to uh, for the wireframe? Oh, okay. Yep. Excellent. Sweet. Yeah, and, and if anybody has any questions, as we stated before, feel free to email support at cnxcorp.com. Also, if you have recommendations on content you'd like to see in a Valence Developer Diary session, feel free to let us know. And yeah, that's it. So we'll uh, see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.